border, which are the criticality of lawfare. Lawfare, as I say, it's easy to practice in countries that clearly endorse the idea of rule by law. When you are adamant about the fact that law is just a social control tool, you have no problem in making this tool uh, working as you as you wish. On the other hand, liberal or in general democratic regime are skating on the, on a very thin ice. On the one hand, they worship the rule of law, the respect of rule, uh, the the idea that uh, we we all must comply with legislation. But in the reality, what they do is to bend the rules, but they have to find a way, a narrative, or in some some cases, some propaganda approach to lure people into thinking that what is happening is entirely legal and that there is no there are no issues of infringement of the rule of law. We have several cases that prove that this statement is correct. Just think of the plausible deniability mechanism. Okay, the idea is of plausible deniability is public policy tools in which the inner decisional process is run so that the head can legitimately deny to having been informed of some order and the operator who execute who do who does an illegal act can in good faith claim that he thought that the, the order was legitimate an example of passing law that should not be passed as a way to uh, to pursue a national interest is the the upcoming um, uh, the, the upcoming legislation cl on client side encryption. If you use WhatsApp or Signal, or in general, you are familiar with the uh, HTTPS protocol, you, you know that all conversation, all the messages are encrypted right on the terminal and then sent out on the network already encrypted. In the, uh, so, since the encryption happens at a device level, it it will be very challenging for uh, a man in the middle to, to catch, to, to, to grasp your uh, our conversation. Uh, Client-side encryption, this is called client-side encryption. The United Kingdom and the European Union, with the intent on, of protecting minors, protecting children, are pushing for a legislation that, that outlaws client-side encryption or uh, weakens this kind of encryption so that a law enforcement agency can easily access it. What they are advocating for is the, the loading of a client-side scanning software, meaning an application, a process in the smartphone, in a tablet or in a computer, routinely scan like an antivirus all the content of the of the device and before it becomes encrypted so this is the idea when an illegal content or an illegal message is found this message is automatically reported to the to the authorities you you might think that this this is a very dystopian future perspective however it's already there it's already here because this is exactly what Apple proposed, sparkling an outraged reaction all over the world, when he advocated for uh, enforcing exactly that, a client-side scanning on iCloud backup iPhones so that uh, everything could be scrutinized and reported to, to public authority. Also, Google has been uh, is known to, to run this kind of control on the data stored in Google Clouds. Uh, it's fairly recent media case has been made public of a father that went under criminal investigation for uh, child pornography because Google system found uh, a picture of his uh, son naked. The point is that that was a picture that the father sent to a pediatrician uh, because the, the kid needed uh, medical advice. Google system failed to understand the, the, the reason why the, the picture was there. And this father has been uh, subjected uh, by mistake, but it was subjected nonetheless to a very uh, tough investigation from the, from the FBI. So client-side scanning, it's already there. In the EU, is not yet uh, a regulation, is not yet mandatory. However, the trend is set, and the European Union is trying to enforce, and it will eventually, this kind of global and preemptive control on every uh, member state citizen because of the need to protect minors. Once again, it's clear in this case, the narrative, uh, the, the story 
that support the need for client side uh, has nothing to do with the protection of minors and that protect, protecting minor uh, is just a smoke screen to actually introduce a system that once uh, is put on, on place can be used for whatever the power that be wants to use it. I don't want to sound a global plotter when I, when I say these kind of things. The point is that when you put a limit to such kind of technology, and you in particular enforce such kind of remote control, automated and mass remote control, there is no limit to what a government can, can do. Another example of rule bending and smoke screen is the recently announced Cyber Solidarity Act. The name sounds tranquilizing, so it evokes an idea of cooperation. What the Cyber Solidarity Act actually says is that the Commission is trying to create a rule set allowing reaction to attacks. Please keep in mind this latter statement because we will be in a few minutes the actual meaning and the consequences of this, of this approach. Lawfare is, is everywhere. As I said, there are a lot of examples also in the recent uh, history. I just mentioned, in addition to the, the cases I, I have already talked about, the, the Adobe Venezuela case. In 2017, President Trump issued an, issued an executive order preventing U.S. companies from doing business with Venezuela. Forcing this executive order, Adobe just switch off all the creative creative cloud subscription. Later, they reenacted the availability of the services because of a mediation they have found with the uh, with U.S. government. Nonetheless, the idea that with the, just the, uh, the, the push of a button, an entire nation can be denied access to software, data, and information. Uh, it's fairly threatening. In Italy, we have uh, this goofy national, national security cyber perimeter that it's a clumsy piece of legislation that it's trying to, to enhance the power of the president of the council, giving him essentially a kill switch. One of the less talked about feature of the legislation of the national uh, cybersecurity perimeter is the fact that like the US presidents, for instance, also the Italian president of the council, regardless of the personal identity of the prime minister, of course, has now the power to press the red button that disconnect telecommunication network in case of threats for uh, national uh, security. We, had, we don't have the time to enter into legality of this provision, but the point is that nobody will challenge it. So even though, even if this kind of legislation is not exactly and technically correct, there will never be a court that will declare it su as such. So basically we have questionable legislation that nonetheless is effective and enforced. These are just a few examples of how law fair works and how uh, rule by law is mixed uh, with, with rule uh, of law. But how does uh, offensive security fits into this game? Well, traditionally, we, we define offensive security. I copied and pasted the, uh, a definition uh, coming from che uh, Checkpoint Software. Offensive security is defined as testing, bypassing, breaching organizations' defense to find the holes so that it, uh, they can be fixed before a real attacker can exploit them. As a matter of fact, offensive security started with a few years ago with uh, with old school tricks, we all done, we, we all did, at least if you were part of the hacking community uh, back in the days, I'm talking about social engineering uh, and, and trashing. But right now, offensive security techniques, techniques have evolved toward very uh, sophisticated and complex practice. Is offensive security legal? Yes, of course, but not uh, in every, in every uh, possibility. In this case, it's fairly clear what is possible and what is not. Offensive security techniques can be applied to whatever field, provided that you comply with labor law. It would be complicated to explain the detail of how to do it, but trust me on that. Uh, it is possible to find a series of agreements that can uh, allow a very extensive practice of attacks against employees, 
and company structure to, uh, to exploit and to find vulnerabilities. Another pillar to, be, to consider is, of course, the data protection regulation, but the most important is criminal law. There is a clear statement in the, into the uh, criminal code in Italy that says that if you have the authorization of the, let's call it, victim, then you're not committing a crime, even if your behavior is, technically speaking, a criminal offense. Of course, there are limits to this kind of authorization, because if limits weren't set, then it might be legal to kill somebody else just because he asked for. Of course, this is not possible. But taking apart, taking apart this extreme, extreme example, uh, it's possible to have to draft an a letter of authorization or a contractual provision that allow a security company or a security consultant to use a wide range of tools to attack an entity, including a, a red team, blue team, and all this fancy cybersecurity marketing label that, that affects the the cybersecurity the cybersecurity business Probably.